All right, there we are. What's going on, everybody? Tori and Scott here. Thank you so very much. So, thank you so very much for watching the rebroadcast of this Mastery Monday. Mastery Monday is all about truly mastering your gifts, your talents, your abilities, and truly making an impact in the generation that you live in, as well as the generation that's to come. So, want to want you to like, love, share this. Liking is the right thing. Sharing is caring. Invite somebody to the conversation. I guarantee you, you do not want to miss what we're going to talk about today. Thank you so very much for those of you who are joining us. Say what's going on as you are coming in. Invite people. Talk about where you are, are actually watching in from. I would love to see how many people we have uh, coming in everywhere. I'm going to start over here on uh, Instagram too. All right. Instagram IG fam. I'm so glad that you are with us tonight. So uh, help me build an audience like this, love this, share this, um, you know, comment where you're actually watching in from and all of that good stuff. We're live both here on the Instagram for the Instagram fam, as well as on Facebook. So like I said, liking is the right thing. Sharing is care. And we're talking about the eight things, the eight things that I got out of today's watching the celebration. I know that everybody from all around the world was watching the celebration of life today at the Staples Center. And man, so many people uh, were commenting, so many people were talking about it. And I want to talk about it tonight as well. And uh, I want to get you involved in this process too, because I want to hear from you. I want to hear what your takeaways were. I want to hear what your thoughts were as well. So uh, Instagram, Come on with it. What's going on? Uh, let's talk about it. Let's let's see how you where you're coming from, where you're watching in from. Uh, so comment on uh, the uh, the post there. All right. So those of us on the Facebook land, let's do this thing. Let's keep on rocking and rolling. Tell us where you're going. Okay, we got Miss Terry McAdoo from Claremont. Miss T, are you in Claremont right now? Are you still in Las Vegas? Okay. Because you was in Las Vegas all weekend, partying it up, doing your business thing. So proud of you. Let us know where you're watching in from. I love uh, seeing how many people come from different places. And so we're building, like I said, a community of people who are faith-based, but also have a desire to see their purpose lived out in the marketplace in a grander scheme. So I want to talk to you today because I cannot tell you how moved I was today by uh, the events. Um they were so dynamic. And I want to hear from you. If you're watching right now, I want to hear from you. What was like your biggest takeaway that you got from uh, today? What was one of your biggest takeaways? Like what was your favorite part? Was it, you know, Christina Aguilera? Was it Beyonce? Was it, you know, Vanessa Bryant actually coming up and talking on the on the stage for, for you know, for the very first time? The world was hearing from her, you know, audibly. Um, what's going on, Julie from Chino? What's up? Good to see you. What was your favorite part? Um, was it, you know, Michael Jordan? You know, I'm going to talk about him a little bit too. Uh, his was very, very moving. Was it Shaq's? You know, I want to talk to you. Come on. Tell me what was your favorite part about um, the, the celebration tonight or earlier today? What was your favorite part of the celebration today? I'll wait for some of your comments to start rolling in. And while you're here, please make sure that you're liking, make sure that you're sharing, make sure that you're loving. Uh, I want to see some emojis, people. Let's go. Let's give the emojis. Some of y'all are just face looking or face lurking tonight. I got some good stuff for you, all right? And I'm um, taking some time uh, away uh, from my family that I can be with my family. That I'm being with you tonight. So please participate. Um, I'm asking you uh, so that we can truly build a great conversation. All right. I'm not sure what's going on here on the Instagram side, uh, but uh, they look like they're kind of slow to the punch at this particular point. But we're, we're going to let y'all make it a little bit. All right. Um, we got Julie from Chino. We got Terry from Claremont. Uh, anybody else say anything? All right. Tell me, what was your favorite part? We got a few people watching. So I would love to hear from you. Maybe you guys are caught up in talking or maybe caught up in typing a little bit. Uh, so tell me, what was your favorite part of today's celebration? What was your favorite part? Okay. Miss Terry says, I like this. I hope that you guys are, I hope that you guys are actually doing some more things. I hope that you guys are actually commenting. 
All right. Vanessa Bryant's speech was extremely emotional. I did not watch it live. I caught her speech later in the afternoon on the internet. Yes, it was powerful. It was it was so moving. It was so emotional. Um, you know, um, words can't describe, you know, a parent losing a child. You know, I, I mean, you know, this one, of course, hit home again for us because, of course, my little brother went home to be with the Lord last year. And um, it's not easy losing a child. I'm, I'm seeing that first and it is not easy losing a child because it's not supposed to go that way, right? It's not supposed to be the child before the parent. It's supposed to be the parent before the child. So naturally there are these questions. There are these, you know, these doubts, these fear, all of this stuff that comes with it. I mean, it's 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 crazy it's a train wreck of emotions but um but it was so good to hear from you i love it i'm sorry i did not watch the service yet oh yolanda you gotta watch it all right we see some people coming in on uh on instagram over here instagram we are talking about tonight the eight things that i learned that i got from watching the life celebration of gianna as well as kobe bryant as well as the other victims as well so hope that hopefully you are sharing and liking this and loving this and all of those different things we got mariana from ontario all right good to see you very much i appreciate you all all right so i don't want to be before you long um i believe that this could be really short and sweet i believe that we can keep this to about maybe 30 minutes i think that it's going to be really good though all right so hopefully you're writing notes hopefully you're going to take some notes but um i gotta tell you that you know i i would liken you know the feelings that you felt when you found out about Kobe Bryant and Gigi, as well as the rest of the victims of that airplane crash. It's almost like you can go back and feel that moment in time. It, it's like almost like into when people talk about, you know, a tragedy that hits or, you know, 9-11 or where they were when, you know, um, JFK was shot or when they were where they were when they heard that Martin Luther King had been shot and died. And, you know, all of these different places. I mean, it's like. You never forget those emotions. You never forget those feelings. You never forget that. I remember when I found out that Michael Jackson had died. Um, I remember that day so vividly. And it moves you. It touches you. It, it, it basically, it touches a part of you that you didn't even know was there for that person. And I think that the whole world felt this tragedy. The whole world felt this sting, whether you were a Kobe a Kobe fan or friend or not, I believe that it really hits you in a place where it was like, man, tomorrow is not promised. Man, wow, like a father and a daughter at the same time. And then when you learned about the rest of the victims and like, wow, like two, I mean, uh, two parents and a child. And now there's two children at home that are left without parents and a sibling and wow they have you know here's another person that passed away that her husband is at home waiting for her to come back and she's not coming back there's you know i don't know what the pilot situation was but wow i mean it just hit you in different places i don't think that you know a lot of people experience that on this grand scale as we all have felt um in a very very long time um and I think that that's one of the things that really gave us the ability to kind of bond together. People started talking about basketball. People started, you know, calling and checking on people, uh, people calling and checking up on me. You know, hey, man, I know you're in L.A., you know, how's L.A. doing? How's things going on? And, um, you know, it, it just brought people out of the shadows a little bit and brought people to the table for a conversation. And I believe that it was and it is still the finest hour for believers to share the fact that there is life after death, that there is a judgment. The Bible says that um, that after, you know, the final breath is here on the earth. I mean, it's, you know, it's appointed man to once, I mean, to, to live, to die. And then after that, it's the judgment, you know, and so it's not after you die, what happens is no, after you die, you actually live. And so, it brought to light a lot of different conversations and it's it's kind of like 
People are searching for that answer. People are searching for that comfort. People are searching for that peace. You know, a lot of people are searching in different places and different substances, different faces, different arms or whatever the case is. But, you know, we as people of faith, we know that we don't grieve as those who have no hope, you know. And so, um, so I'm, I'm, I'm elated that it has brought a lot of um, conversation. It brought, it's bringing a lot of cross cultural conversations, uh, cross denominational conversations that are happening. Um, I'm sad the way that it's happening. It should not happen like this. Um, but this is what I believe that God can get the glory out of that. Those who remain, uh, can truly live their life in a specific way. And so when I was watching today, my, my eyes were watery a little bit and shed a little thug tears, you know? Um, but the reality is, is that I looked and I learned a lot of different things. I was reminded. And it's not that I learned them for the very first time. It's kind of like when you hear something again and it's like, ah, oh, yeah, you know, it's almost like this refresher course that you went through. And, you know, throughout the time of of Kobe Bryant's life, although I wasn't, I'm not a, I'm not a basketball watcher at all. I only watch the finals. Uh, the Super Bowl comes around. I only watch the Super Bowl. I mean, I'm one of those type of guys. So I'm not a diehard Laker fan or anything. But one of the things that I really, truly respected about Kobe was his work ethic. I really respected his mindset. I really respected the fact that he worked so hard. And this is the mindset that this gentleman had at a teenager. And he just progressively got better and better and better and better. And, you know, we're not talking about the, his imperfections or his perfections. We're not talking about that. We're just talking about the things that we can actually mine from his life, the things that we can actually see within his life that we can say, hey, wow, that's a good lesson. You know, there's more, there's an old adage out there that says more is caught than taught. Put that down in the notes because it's going to be very important. More is caught than taught. It's so important for us to re recognize that as well as to remember that, that people don't, you know, or, well, I would say people, you don't duplicate what you say, you duplicate who you are. And when you have this level of life, this level of excellency, this level of uh, victory, this level of um, proficiency in a certain place, um, you could talk about it, but really the lesson is not in just hearing him talk about it. It's actually observing him do it. And um, I love the different backgrounds that we heard from. We heard, of course, for the very first time from Miss Vanessa Bryant, uh, very first time the whole world heard her voice audibly about her her daughter as well as her husband. Um, and I believe that all of our hearts broke. I believe that everybody was like, oh man, this is this is tough. You could feel it in her expression. You could feel it in her voice. Even when Jimmy Kimmel was up, you know, when he got up and he was cracking up, I was like, oh man, this is going to be a hard service right here. Um, as a person who does services, a person who does funerals and memorials and all of that different stuff, uh, if the first person gets up and they already jacked up, you know, it's going to be a pretty tough one. And so, um, but we made it through. And so Beyonce got up there, did her thing. And um, everybody really was showing support and they were showing love. It was good to see, you know, um, basketball stars and people who um, they played against Kobe. And some people maybe not had the best relationship with him, but still actually sit in there giving their respect. And it was just a beautiful moment to me, for me personally, of what a life could be actually accomplish. Um, you know, he was only on, you know, the earth for a few short years, you know, um, and, you know, he played, you know, for 20 years in, in, the, in the league and, you know, he was drafted at a young age and the story that he had, the story that he, that he carried was just a powerful story of what it, what your life could look like if you focused. And, you know, I'm a person that's always talking to leaders and, and coaching entrepreneurs and, 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 and executives and I'm in companies and I'm in private rooms and I'm in boardrooms. I'm on the phone talking to leaders and talking to people about dreams, visions, ideas, purpose and everything. But to see this gentleman truly live out his purpose at such a grand scale was just absolutely breathtaking for me. And so I respected him. I really respected him. Last year, um, 
I was invited to Cal Poly Pomona and I got a chance to speak to them about what's going on, Dr. Luis Ariaza. You my main man. You are my main man. Um, I, I got a chance to speak to these graduating seniors about um, the mindset of leadership. And I used Kobe as the the model, the mantra, you know, the mamba in himself. You know, this is certain things that he did in order to make himself great. He had these specific principles that he used in order for him to be the man that he is. And, you know, he wasn't like trying to, you know, always, you know, you know, well, I can't even say that. He was always trying to be the best of the best. He was. Um, but it wasn't coming from a place of arrogance. It was a pl coming from a place of true confidence. And so um, so those are just my introductory kind of remarks. I, I want you to engage with it. And so I would love to hear from you. What are some of the things that you took away from, you know, just watching it and Kobe's life and, you know, what you know about the situation or whatever the case is? Nothing negative. Please don't don't please don't put anything negative on here. I'll block you, delete you and, you know, act like nothing even happened, you know. So but if you would please, I would love to hear, you know, what you took from his life. But as I'm talking, maybe you can start writing. So the first thing that I uh, witnessed and I really were a was able to glean from tonight was um, invest in the greatness that is already in you. You know, over the past couple of weeks at our church, Harvest International Church, we've been talking about the talents and the parable of the talents and how God issued to every single servant that he had according to their ability. Basically, he was putting their trust in him based off of what he saw in them. And you got to look at your life as somebody who is not necessarily, um, uh, you're you're not a step over. You're not a pushover. You got to look at yourself as someone who is full of purpose and full of greatness. Um, my friend Evan Money, he is coined for this term that you you are preloaded with greatness, just like our iPhones or you know those Androids out there, you Droid users out there. Don't know why, but um, but the, our us us iPhone users out here. Uh, there are preloaded apps that you can't get rid of. And it's, uh, you you know, whenever you're trying to move it around and, you know, all of them start shaking and those don't don't really shake. They don't have the little X on the top or whatever. It's because they're preloaded in it and you cannot shake them off. You cannot get them off. Not with just a regular swipe, not just with a regular touch. Um, and it's the same thing of greatness on the inside of every single one of us that is listening today. And I want you to really take notes with this because you, sometimes you got to be reminded that, man, the life that you live, the life that you have, it's a great life. Even though things may have ha happened hard in your life, even though things may have not turned out and panned out to the point where you feel like you are, um, you know, on the top of your game, or maybe you feel like, or maybe you don't feel like, you know, you have everything that you need. I got to still got to, I still have to let you know that you are great, that there's greatness on the inside of you. You know, the, the seed you know, can't speak to the tree and say, you know, I'm nothing. No, the tree would look back at the seed and say, no, I'm in you. So you got to stay planted. You can't move out of your place. You can't move out of your environment. You got to allow yourself to grow. You got to give yourself time, space, energy, sunlight. You got to give yourself the right water. You got to give yourself the right environment. You got to give yourself the right people because the greatness in you wants to grow out of you. And so when I looked at his life and I was just thinking about greatness, and of course, biblically, Jesus talks about greatness, how greatness is a result of service. Somebody put that down. Greatness is a result of service. Um, and how he invested in that greatness with service. He serviced, you know, this this ability that he had on the inside of him, you know, waking up at 4 a.m. and doing the 5,000 shots, you know, in the morning time, making sure that he had on his game, getting there before everybody else, you know, keeping his head in the game, you know, doing the things that are necessary in order to invest and to amplify what was already given to him. See, the thing that that really gets a lot of us is that we don't believe that we're great. And when you don't believe that you're great and you when you don't believe that you don't have anything on the inside of you to give, guess what? You begin to allow that thing to waste away. And if you don't use it, you lose it. If you don't use it, you'll abuse it. If you don't use it, somebody else will try to use it. And 
you got to get an understanding that there's greatness on the inside of you. And so I had to recognize that, you know, there's greatness on the inside of me, but I got to make sure that I'm still serving my gift. I'm still amplifying my gift. I'm still allowing myself to get out of my comfort zone. I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to do things that, you know, are not comfortable. I'm allowing myself to go places that don't feel like quote unquote me so that I can be comfortable being uncomfortable. That's how I'm going to grow my greatness. I'm going to grow my greatness in doing those things, but also I'm going to grow my greatness and service. And so, you know, invest in your greatness. That's the biggest thing that I want to take away from this number one thing is invest in your greatness. Investing in your greatness is so important. And so it's so easy to let your gifts be taken for granted and not take them seriously. One of the most, I would say, frustrating and alarming things in the world today is for you to have a gift for you to have an ability, for you to have a talent, but you don't invest in it. And here comes somebody who is left, less gifted, less talented, less equipped, less able, but they're more focused and they actually obtain what you could have obtained by just a blink of a hat if you had just applied some discipline and invested in your greatness. That's what I want you to understand. I want you to invest in your greatness. I, I know I'm talking to somebody out there. So if I'm talking to you out there, please give me some likes, some love, some emojis and everything. Let's get this engagement up. I really want to reach these these next these next leaders, these world changers that are out there that aren't necessarily getting this from their music. They're not necessarily getting this from the books or the, the courses that they take or the things or the, the, the environments that they're in on a, on a consistent basis. I want to get this message out to invest in your greatness. So that's number one. Number two, the second lesson that I got is to learn from others, no matter how great or how small. I love this particular one because, you know, you saw Kobe learn not only from the greatest of the great Mr. Michael Jordan, and I loved his speech. His speech was so heartfelt. Me and my wife were talking about it because his speech was so heartfelt because it felt real. It felt like, man, I really knew this guy, that we talked together, we played together, we cried together, we got frustrated at each other together. You know, it wasn't polished. You know, this is a guy who, you know, people are, uh, you know, they're comparing him to me and I'm supposed to be the greatest. What do you mean? You know, so there's that ego thing that goes there. So I, I just felt all of that within his speech and you know the thing that broke it and I know everybody was thinking it everybody was thinking when he started crying every single one of us saw that Michael Jordan crying meme did you see it before he, I know you did if you saw it just give me some likes and loves or just say me right but I saw it and then he broke and he was like you know I got it. I know I'm going to have to. <laughs> he said, Kobe pulled some things out of you. So I know I'm going to be seeing more crying memes, you know, uh, for the rest of my life, if you will. But but I thought that that was so comical. But he learned not only from um, Michael Jordan, but I love what he learned from uh, the college coach as well. You know, when it comes down to coaching his own children and co coaching um, uh, coaching uh, Gigi, he, he really learned from the best in order to be the best. And that's what I need you to understand. And that's one of the things that I, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about what you need to understand. I'm just going to talk about me. How about that? This is Mastery Monday, right? Um, so maybe you just hear from my perspective. One of the things that I need to truly remember is that I, I don't need to just learn from the greatest. I, I need to learn from all people. I need to learn from all People, all different things. I need to be able to see how my kids are resilient to learn how to write their ABCs and learn how to sound out a letter. I need to learn what it means to be resilient, even at that small age. I need to learn from the greatest of what it looks like to be resilient and what the persecution looks like for being resilient feels like. I need to learn those things. And so I, I, I really took that away from just watching how he learned from so many different people. So that's lesson number two. Lesson number three. Um, so if you're writing notes, please, I need some note takers. If you can be a note taker for me tonight, that will be a blessing. So number one is I learned investing in greatness, investing in greatness. Please write that down in the notes. The eight, the first thing of the eight things is invest in greatness. The second thing is humility. Learn from others, no matter how big or how small, no matter how great, no matter how famous or, or not learn from people. So that's humility. 
And then number three, continue to pour into others who look up to you. You know, this point is about mentorship. Mentorship is so important in my life. Um, my father, my biological father wasn't in my life and um, he taught me things even in his absence that I still live out today in a, in a very good way. Uh, but in the midst of all of that, God brought other men into my life so that I could not be missing anything at all. Um, more so, I mean, he came into my life. Proverbs 27 verse 10 is probably my, one of my favorite verses in the, in the scriptures that say, even if my mother and my father forsake me, he takes me up as his own. So, God was able to mentor me and send mentors into my life. So when he talks about when when I got this revelation or this reminder about mentorship, it just hit me because I saw that prevalent in his life. I saw that, you know, he would actually reach out to others. And you you heard the testimony of um, the young girl who was being mentored by him. And, you know, he would call or text her and be like, hey, what's going on? You know, how's everything? You know, good game. Saw the highlights, you know, checking in on her. He was never too busy to give of himself. He was never too busy to lend out a hand. You know, I know a lot of people, guys. I know a lot of, a lot of people. Um, I know a lot of big name people. I know a lot of great people. I know a lot of important people. Um, but don't necessarily, you have to, you have to actually pay thousands of dollars in order just to get their time. But one of the biggest things that, 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 that was so amazing to me is that Kobe Bryant being worth millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, arguably billions at this particular point. But he had a free organization for kids who just wanted to learn how to play basketball. You know, I look at the punies, the podcast punies that um, my kids fell in love with. I fell in love with the whole series. We learned that it was coming out. And when it came out, we listened to season one. And we were like, man, when is season two coming out? And season two finally came out. And, and man, season two came out. And we we're like, yes, it's great. And now we're like, oh, man, there's not going to be a season three because he was the one that was writing it. But the fact that he had a free podcast for kids to be able to learn in a different regard, mentorship is so important. And it asks, I had to look at my life and say, you know, who am I truly outside of clientele, outside of um, people who, you know, hire me and all of those different things, but who am I truly giving of myself to outside of my family? Because I give myself to my family. But Outside of my family, who else am I giving to that I can pour into the knowledge, the wisdom? And I believe that that's why I'm doing this right here, because, you know, I would love to sit down one on one with everybody. I'd love to have have lunch and have breakfast and have, you know, coffee with every single person who has a question. And I make it my point to actually do that on a consistent basis. But uh, the vision that I have in my heart is to touch so many people. And so sometimes the best medium is kind of like this. And it takes people like you who get value out of this to actually like it, love it, share it. And so somebody else can be uplifted. But the power of mentorship is so important and I cannot neglect that. So that's what I learned, that the power of mentorship is amazing. So number one is invest in greatness. Number two is humility. Number three is the power of mentorship. Now, number four is really great because you couldn't hear anything a comment from anyone without them referencing back to what type of family man he was, that he was a man who truly loved his family, that he was a man who went over and be above and beyond for his family, arriving to his daughter's, um, <laughs> he was late one time, but arriving to his daughter's school an hour and 20 minutes early in order to make sure that he was there to pick them up on time. Um, learning how to um, pl play um, the, 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 um, I forgot what what the, actually it was like. Um, what was that? What was that? The piano. The piano. And it was the piano. But do you know which? Which Moonlight Sonata. Uh, yeah, Moonlight Sonata. Uh, learning how to play Moonlight Sonata for his wife. You know, buying her. Now this was a cold move right here. So, you know, here's the thing with with Kobe. Like I was getting a little, you know, jealous a little bit because your boy, of course, you know, being Kobe, but he got he got the exact blue dress from the Notebook. What? Come on. I mean, I know you Kobe and all, but who thinks that way? I mean, so, I mean, he was like, I mean, he was scoring points, like truly, truly scoring points for real, for real. Right. But, um, but his love for his family was unmatched. 
by anything else. I mean, he he loved the game of basketball. He loved everything about it, and especially that was documented in his documentary or his small and short, um, you know, Dear Basketball. But, you know, his love for his family was unmatched. And that really gave me this this revelation. Torian, do you truly love your family like that? Do you go to the extra mile like that? I'm going to challenge you this year to go to the extra mile like that. You know, not exactly like that, but to, to go above and beyond for my kids, for my wife, you know, to the people that are in my life, my mother, my my sister, my cousins, my, my nieces, my nephews, you know, um, you know, just to be there for people, you know, and and to be there for the people that share your name, that share the same blood as you, you know? Um, so being there for your family. And, um, you know, and so that was the number four thing. The fifth thing, we're almost finished. Um, the fifth thing, uh, yeah, Josh, I, yeah, we love that about him. We love that about him as well. The fifth thing that I learned is lead in love at all times. Lead in love at all times. What I got from Kobe was the everything that he did was from a place of love. The everything that he did as far as in the community, whether it was with his, with his family, even down to his best friend's text message while he was on the helicopter before it went down. His whole testimony about, my goodness, how he was he was giving, he was wanting to give an opportunity to one of the victim's sisters for baseball. Like he was doing this out of the genuineness and the love of his heart. And it it challenged me as well that how many times have you said, well, you know, that person, you know, they're not serious about whatever, da, 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 da. They don't have this anyway. So, you know, I'm just going to just maybe not, you know, pay attention to that. You don't know. He looked, he, 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 he mined his resources because he knew that there was going to be something great that came out of this person who had the potential. And that was motivated by love. You know, scripture says that love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious, it's not boastful. Um, it doesn't, you know, it, it rejoices with, you know, the truth, you know, it doesn't boast, you know, it's, it rejoices with all things and it, it never fails and it conquers all. I believe that that's one of the things that he lived out was that love that conquers all, that believed all things, that hoped all things. And so that's what are the things that I'm taking away from it. Okay. Let's keep on going. Number six, we're almost done. I remember I was only, it's only eight of them. So number six, the next thing is confidence. I love what the the WNBA player, uh, you know, she's nicknamed the White Mamba, right? So I love what she talked about with confidence. She said, you know, he was a man of confidence. He would always intimidate people because people who did not have that confidence, they looked at it as arrogance. But a person who's confident in their skin will always be villainized by a person who does not feel confident in their own skin. And I loved that part of it because he dealt with confidence. He played with confidence. He practiced with confidence. He rested with confidence. He did everything he did with confidence. And I thought that that was such a beautiful thing because in all of our lives, I know, especially in my life, there's pl places, there's areas that I'm working on my confidence. I'm working on my proficiency. I'm working on me feeling okay being me in a, in a room that a room of people that may not necessarily look like me. I'm in a I'm in a in a place in an uncomfortable place where I I have to speak and you know there's degrees in the room that you know that probably have studied way deeper than I have at, on this particular subject but I have to learn how to move into confidence on a consistent basis and God gives us that confidence you know it's not by might it's not my power it's by His Spirit right He's the one that gives you the confidence He's the ones He's the one that gives you the grace He's the one that gives you the wisdom the strength and all of the things, but to walk in that on a consistent basis was, was something amazing. And so number seven is to live on purpose. Put that down in the notes, live on purpose. If you're watching the rebroadcast, I appreciate you for hanging out with us this long, but write down in the notes, live on purpose. Living on purpose is so important. You know, there's a need in the earth that made your existence necessary. That's one of the things that my mentor, Bishop Ivy Hilliard, used to always say. 
that there's a need on the earth that made your existence necessary. Another mentor of mine, Miles Monroe, the late great Miles Monroe, he would always say that life, uh, the greatest tragedy of life is not death, it's life with no purpose. That you must find out what your purpose is because when you find out what your purpose is, that's when you find your significance. And until you find your purpose, your life is a mere experiment. And purpose is so important. And I believe that one of the things that Kobe did was live a life of purpose. Was he perfect? No. Was he, you know, I, I love what what Vanessa Bryant said. You know, we were imperfect people. We're imperfect people, you know, in love. And I, and, and I think that that's all of us. Nobody is perfect on this line. Nobody is perfect on this live, you know. We're all at this place of a work in progress, but still work on your purpose Work with work on your purpose. Find out what it is that you were created to do. Find out what it is that you were impassioned and emboldened to do. I tell people that there's three ways for you to be able to identify and live out your purpose. Number one is what to, to identify in your life right now. Look through your life, mind your life, go through your life and ask, is there a commonality of what inspires you? Is it arts? Is it crafts? Is it people? Is it music? Is it business? Is it organization? Is it counseling? Is it listening? Whatever it is, you know, maybe what inspires you about that? Maybe you can find purpose in that. Number two, what intimidates you, right? What intimidates you? What are the things that you are scared of? What are you scared to do? There's so many people that were like, you know, I don't, I don't want to go into that. You know, I think about all of the, the superstars that we see that was like, I was so scared to sing, but now look at the superstar now. I was so scared to write, but look at the best-selling author now. I was so scared to speak, but look at the best-selling author and speaker now. You know, it, it's, it takes that fear, that thing that intimidates you to push you in, in the forefront so that you can identify what your purpose is. And then also the last thing is what infuriates you? What is the thing that makes you mad? It ticks you off. It, it gets underneath your skin. And I believe that one of the things that Kobe was able to live out when it comes down to purpose, the thing that got underneath his skin was maybe seeing a talented person who was really able to do some great things, but yet they didn't apply the discipline to the actual gifting. Maybe that's what infuriated him. Maybe that's what caused him to truly be a ball hog, if you will. Maybe he didn't see the ability or people would actually waste the game because they're just trying to maybe get paid or maybe they're just a little bit tired. They're a little lethargic. And he's the one that's really, truly fighting for this thing, getting up in the morning, making sure that he's, you know, in, in, in tip top shape. He's playing through injuries and everything like that. Maybe that's the reason why people call him the ball hog, but maybe he was hogging the ball because he was infuriated by the lack of work ethic that he saw maybe in his teammates or maybe even in the other team. And so, you know, maybe that's what inferior, maybe that's what drove him to purpose. What it is, whatever it is, it helped me to understand Tori and continue to live on purpose, continue to do these lives, continue to write, continue to share your voice, continue to put it out there. Yeah, there may be a thousand people that watch this. Maybe there's a hundred people that watch this. Maybe there's one person that watches it, but whatever, if I could just help one person, with the purpose that God has given me, I know that my life has truly been worth living. And so those are seven things, but the eighth thing that I want to share with you, are you ready for this? <coughs> Excuse me. The eighth thing that I wanna share with you about what I learned from Kobe today is that tomorrow is not promised. It's not. And you can be on the top of your game. You can be at the lowest place of your life. You can be at the mid range, right in your prime. And life be over for you. And one of the things that I am taking into consideration in my own personal life is how I live the rest of my life. That I say something every single day. One of my favorite um, confessions to say is within the boss credo. And um, for those of you who know what boss the movement is, uh, it's a it's a wonderful curriculum uh, for those who are from, I believe, I think as young as seven to now to 19 years old, they can go through it. And then they have another uh, level of it called vertical leap. And I have taught that curriculum for years, but the principles I've lived out for years. But there's this one particular part, there's 10 pledges. 
And, <coughs> excuse me, and the fifth pledge says that I will live this day as if it were my last with the confidence that all things will work together for my good <coughs> because I love God and I am called according to his purpose. Excuse me. Let me get, uh, where did my water go? Right here. Um, said, I will live this day as if it were my last with the confidence that all things will work together for my good because I love God and I am called according to his purpose. Tomorrow is not promised to any person. You can have the most money in the bank. I, I remember what Steve Jobs said. He said, you know, I could hire somebody to create an app for me. I could hire somebody to uh, develop something for me. I could hire somebody to do this and that. I could not hire anybody to carry cancer for me. And it was at that moment, I believe, that he realized this life is but a vapor. And so... I just want to share those things with you because I learned those things because when you when you look back up the things that, you know, that he taught us, that we could mine from his life. Like I said, he wasn't a perfect man. I'm not deifying the man or anything like that. So please don't get me wrong. I'm not, you know, worshiping him or anything like that or nothing like that. I'm just sharing with you the things that I was inspired by hearing the testimony of the people who were in his life personally. That Number one, it inspired me and I learned, number one, the, the ability to invest in my own greatness. Number two, I was reminded or learned the power of humility. Number three, I learned the power and I was reminded of the power of mentorship. Number four, I was reminded that family should be next to God, the very next thing. It should be not family, excuse me, it should not be, yeah, it should not be family, business, fun, then God. It should be God, family then whatever else comes next, you know? And so um, that family is very high on the totem pole. Next is heart, you know, that he led with his heart. He led with love. He he did everything that he needed to do with love. And then also, number seven, to live out his purpose, to live out his purpose. And then number eight, lastly, which is to count your days and count your blessings within the day. Hug everybody that you that you know love on everybody that you can actually love on forgive people let them go you know the issues the problems the pains you know i, I know that they're real but let's work towards forgiveness let's work towards release so that you don't have to carry that pain and reduplicate that pain in someone else's life so those are the few things that i learned from uh, today's celebration. And I just wanted to share that today. Doing something, like I said, uh, you saw this, it's Mastery Monday. You know, there's a lot of different Monday things out there. And um, Monday is generally my day off that I don't do anything. I don't, um, the only thing that I do on that day is because I committed every single solitary um, kindergarten year is to uh, help my, my child's um, class learn how to read. So that's the only thing that I do. Um, outside of just hanging out with my wife and that's it. Uh, every other day I'm working, I'm grinding, I'm preparing, I'm writing, I'm doing all this other stuff. But Mondays have been a sense of where I get my refocus and my regrouping back for me personally. And I want to share some of those things with you. And uh, we won't always be live on Mondays. There's going to be some nuggets that I share with you because, you know, there's people that have um, momentum Mondays. You know, I had a, for a long time, I had a um, Monday momentum prayer walk that I did, um, which people love, um, but that season is over. Um, and I had also um, motivational Monday. There's other people that have motivational Monday and everything. And I'm just the type of guy that I always like to create something different, something out of the box, something that's totally unique for me, because if it's not unique for me, I feel like I'm being a carbon copy. So I didn't want to call this motivational Monday because that's already taken. I didn't want to call it momentum Monday because that's starting to be popular. I wanted to make it a mastery Monday because when you're talking about mastery, for those of you who are just hanging out with me right now, I'm just speaking from the heart. We're talking about mastery. It really is diving in to the full definition of your purpose. It's really tapping into the depth of the potential that God put on the inside of you. It is truly focusing your mind on being the best that you could ever be in the industry, in the family, in the community, in the organization, in the whatever that you're involved in, that you are the 
best in whatever you put your hands to do because that's what my MO in life is. That's my motive of opera. That's my motive of operandi. If that's how you say it. That is my major motive is to be the very best in everything that I do. I want to be the best husband that my wife has ever had. I want to be the best father that my children will ever have. I want to be the best pastor that Harvest International Church will ever have. I want to be the best friend that you have ever had. I want to be the best counselor. I want to be the best officiant. I want to be the best coach. I want to be the best teacher. I want to be the best uh, lean on. I want to be the best shoulder. I want to be the best that I could be to serve whoever God has allowed me to serve. And that's what Mastery Monday is all about. And so every single Monday, I'm going to be giving you some nut, something to think about. And it's almost like it's a mastery, not just Monday. How about we rename it this? It's mastery, not mastery Monday, but mastery mind day. Because, you know, so many people start their week with the mindset of, oh, it's Monday. Oh, it's the case of the Mondays, right? They have this mindset of, oh, I just got to get through it. But what if you had a mindset on Monday that you would master every single thing that came your way, every single problem that came your way, every single issue, every single pain, every single obstacle that came your way, every single opportunity that came your way, every single client that came your way, that you were going to master it and that you were going to have dominion and that you were going to have influence wherever you are. That's what mastery mind day is all about so that's who i am tori and scott there we go pastor karen griffin i love you i really do you and your husband um mastery mind day put that down in the comments on facebook mastery mind day that's what this is all about but this is what i want to hear from you real quick because, you know, we have a lot of people from all different backgrounds, all different cultures, all different creeds, all that different stuff. I want to hear from you. What are some of the things that you want to hear about? Um, I know that, you know, we talk about business a lot. We talk about leadership a lot. Talk about faith a lot. Um, I would love just to hear your comments. Some of the things that you want to hear. There's some Christian entrepreneurs out there that you got to stay connected to the information that I'm about to give here uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, because... I'm, I'm telling you, just it is your time. The, the entrepreneurs that are out, this is the season of the entrepreneur. It is the time to make a risk and take a risk, okay? It is time out for you just sitting on the sidelines waiting for everything to happen for you. It's now time to start making some things happen. If you agree, put down in the comments, I agree. Seriously, the reality is that Time is not waiting on you to get your stuff together. Time is not waiting on you to figure out what you need to do next. You just need to act. And that takes a bold action of faith, okay? And so um, I want to help you build your vision. I want to help you build and grow. I want to help you build you and build and grow spiritually. Those of you who are out there who are looking for a church home, let me tell you something about the best church in Orange County, Harvest International Church. Brea, California, 789 Wildcat Way, 1030 a.m. every single Sunday. God is building something great in Brea. Those of you who are wanting to rebuild your life spiritually, or maybe you want to go to the next level in your life, you're sitting and you're saying, you know what, man, I just want to change. Like, you know, I hear about this Jesus guy, I hear about this kingdom of God situation. I hear about Holy Spirit. Like, you know, what is this all about? Come to Harvest and find out. Because I guarantee you, number one, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to encounter God. You are going to encounter his presence. God resides at Harvest International Church every single solitary Sunday. There's not one Sunday that persons do not leave, or people, excuse me, person, that people do not leave refreshed, revived, or with a stronger relationship with God. I guarantee you, you are going to absolutely, absolutely soar in your walk with him. Number two, you're going to be empowered by the word of God. One of the things that we truly put our faith in, we put, truly put our time into is to ensure that we are teaching the uncompromised word of God, that we are not just out there just going off of, you know, things that are popular and things that are uh, cool and just building an audience, you know, based off of popularity and, and things that are, you know, catchphrases and everything. We're not doing any of that stuff, but we're teaching the word of God. We're going line upon line, precept upon 
own precept. We're illuminating the scriptures, truths. We are allowing, our, we're mining the, the scriptures for principles and the things that are absolutely powerful to be, um, to be applied to our lives. We're being empowered by the word. Number three, we're being equipped for the purpose. There is a need in the earth that made your existence necessary. So you must understand that there's something great that God wants you to do, but you got to be in the right environment so that you can grow. And then lastly, we engage our community. We go beyond the walls to be in to share the light of Jesus Christ. Though so that means that we're not just cool and we're not just, you know, vibrant. We're not just Holy Spirit filled within the four walls of the church, but no, we're making impact everywhere we go. So I would love, love, love if you're out there and you're looking for a church home, and you're looking for a place that's non-traditional, looking for a place that's, you know, you can just come as you are, Harvest is here for you, okay? With that being said, I just want to say thank you for watching the broadcast. I want to appreciate you, all, everybody that's here on Instagram. I appreciate you. Love you so very much. Those of you who are on Facebook who stuck around for the entire time, I appreciate you. Even for those who may be bounced in and out, hey, I appreciate you as well. I'm just excited about growing with you. I'm excited about going to the next level with you. And I'm excited about getting all of the things that God has placed in me out of me so that not only I can grow, but so that you can grow, so that your life can be better, so that you can just hear from my perspective, maybe one thing, one thing. I'm not saying that everything I say is going to be something that builds your life because maybe you've already heard it and you've already applied it. But maybe there's this one thing that you heard that allows your life to go to the next level. Well, I appreciate you. I want to say thank you. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for hanging out with me. And listen, be on the lookout for Masters in the Marketplace podcast coming. We got that heat coming. It is coming. All right, everybody. My tagline now is lead well. In everything that you do, lead well. In your family, lead well. In your church, lead well. In your organization, lead well. In life, lead well. I'll see you. Real soon. Bye-bye, everybody.